I'm here at HPE Discover in Las Vegas with Ashok Patel, and behind us we have the Apollo 6000. And Ashok, could you tell us what makes up this new server? Absolutely. This is our Apollo 6000 Gen 10 system. It's a 12U chassis supporting 24 nodes, and these nodes are the next generation of the nodes. Um, this product is really designed around extreme compute performance and high density. So what you have here is you have you know 12 uh, 12 U. So uh, you support we support 24 nodes, um, 12 on each side, and then these are all front accessible nodes. Uh, these nodes support the top bin SKUs processor SKUs. Uh, there's some of the you know we've made some significant changes from the previous generation to this generation. We've really optimized it for HPC workloads. Uh, really, this is targeted towards the supercomputing space, mid to supercomputing space, and uh, so customers who want to do racks and racks of deployments of Apollo products for HPC workloads, this is a perfect solution for that. Um, we've we've done, you know, and, and maybe I can just pull out the tray to just kind of show you some of the capabilities that we have in here. All right, so we, we've taken this out of the chassis. Let, let's talk about what's inside. Because this product is really intended for high, you know high performance computing capabilities, extreme compute capabilities. We support the top processor uh, SKU here. Um, we also have the fabric cards. We support both OmniPath or EDR cards, or both actually, through these mezzanine slots. And what it does for the customer is it reduces the amount of cables that they have to route and run. So it kind of, you know, they, for, for them it's very, you know, for time to value it's going to be very, um, very important because now you don't have to run as many cables in the back. Um, so these two slots allow the customers to add their high-speed fabric choice uh, of their desire. Also from a storage perspective, we have you know tremendous amount of storage capabilities. We've got, an, uh, you know, this particular slot is for M.2 support. In the front, we sa support four drives, SATA drives. Uh, there's also an option for smart array cards as well. There's also a PCIe slot, so customers who want um, even faster capabilities, like for a SAS controller, they can attach a SAS controller, they can attach a PCIe SSDs in here as well. And also, um, we've got 10 gig Ethernet integrated into the server tray itself as well. So again, all of these things, you know, we, we've designed it in such a manner to uh, you know, address these complex problems that our customers are seeing in the HPC world. And it sounds like it's very flexible because you've got options at, at all ends. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you know, one of the one of the great things about this product is the performance. You know, at a rack level, uh, we can get to 323 teraflops on the top uh, processor SKU, which is just absolutely fantastic for this particular product. All right, so we turned the chassis around. We're looking at the back. What what's different in Gen 10? Okay, so. You know, as I mentioned, one of the things that we wanted to do was integrate everything into the chassis, uh, try to get as much density out of the chassis as possible, right? So we've integrated our power supply. So if you look at the Gen 9, we had a separate power supply. Now it's all integrated into the chassis. Um, you know, you can see that the, uh, the fans are also, you know, we've got 12 fans in the back. Um, we've got options for customers to select either a PCIe slot for even additional capabilities or flexibility. They can add additional cards, whether that, you know, if 10 gig isn't sufficient, they can go with a 25 gig and uh, add the cards uh, here as well, if, if, you know, if that's their workload. Um, also, one of the things that's, um, you know, what I pointed out in the server tray is that we've got an integrated 10 gig Ethernet. So these are actually switch bays. So in these switch bays, we support either a pass through or a 10 slash 40 gig Ethernet switch. And in these slots, you know, customers can uh, you know, we did this to basically simplify their experience. We did it to, you know, reduce the amount of space required on the rack. And um, the middle two slots are specific for the high-speed fabric. Um, one of the things that we wanted to do was we wanted to make sure that all the switch ports are optimized and utilized for all the nodes that are inside the server or inside the system. And so we have a 36-port EDR switch that gives the customers two-to-one oversubscription. And we have a 48-port uh, Omnipath switch that allows the customers to get one-to-one, one-to-one uh, one subscription, uh, you know, through through the high-speed fabric switch base here. Um, we also have one of the other things that we added in here is the chassis controller. So the chassis controller really monitors the thermal and power. So when nodes are not being utilized, this this guy dynamically um, uh, controls the power and controls the cooling. 
We also have an APM optional module that can be attached here. So for customers who want to do a granular control and have uh, ability to monitor, they're able to do that through the APM module at a rack level. Um, we've also consolidated our ILO ports through this uh, port here. So instead of going through 24 physical cables, they can just go directly through this port and have access to the... Uh, so all the ILO goes through one port? Yeah, through the sing single consolidated aggregator port that we have here for this. And really, you know, the intention of this product is really to simplify the cabling, simplify the management, simplify the service capabilities. As you can see, you know, we have six QSFP ports over here you know, uh, 24 ports, instead of running 24 ports, now you just have, you know, six QSFP plus ports. So again, you know, this product was designed around flexibility. It's a purpose-built solution, you know, depending on what the workloads that the customers have and what their requirements are, this is a highly, highly flexible system for them. And this might be a naive question, but so for like the slots where you said you could put PCIe, could you pick and choose what you put in that slot per node? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's that's the you know that's the beauty of this product. I mean, if you wanted to put a network card in one of them, um, and you wanted to put an SSD uh, PCIe card, you've got that flexibility uh, within that. And we have you know, we within the node you also have internal slot as well, so you can support the smart array card inside, and then have a PCIe card uh, like a network card externally. And so th those those combinations are also possible as well. Wow. So it really is uh, very. Uh, very purpose-built. Pur purpose-built, absolutely, absolutely.